It's January 1st, 2024, and that means Mickey Mouse, the character, is officially listed in the public domain, and people can just take the character image and do whatever they want with them. But there are some caveats to this because it's not necessarily what a lot of people think of it is. And there's also the trademark and copyright image. And those are different things, even though a lot of people tend to use them interchangeably. So I'm making this video just to kind of clarify what this actually means for Disney, because obviously it is kind of a blow for them, but it's not as much as what a lot of people may say on this issue. So looking at this article from NPR, Steamboat Willie is now in the public domain. What does that mean for Mickey Mouse? An early Walt Disney movie featuring the first appearance of Mickey Mouse is among the copyrighted works from 1928 moving into the public domain on January 1st, 2024. So there is a lot of people who have been kind of chiming in on this and what this can actually mean. Uh, they cite this person in this article, uh, Ken Brew McLeod, a communications professor and intellectual property scholar at the University of Iowa. And this is what he had to say about it. What is going into the public domain is this particular appearance in this particular film, he said. That means people can creatively reuse the Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Willie, not the Mickey Mouse in the 1940 movie Fantasia, nor the one on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, a kid's show that aired on Disney Channel for a decade starting in 2006. What I have pulled up here is the evolution of Mickey Mouse, and what they're talking about with this is, this is the version that you're allowed to use. It's not these other versions because these are newer ones. They were came out at different times. And eventually these will kind of go into the public domain as well. But right now, this is the one that's actually available in the public domain. And Disney has been kind of arguing this, that it shouldn't be in the public domain because even though this is an old version that they don't use anymore, it's still very much Mickey Mouse. And one of the things with copyright protections, there's also trademark protections and they have a right to be able to protect their brand, their company, and they not to have other people infringe on their market. And what I mean by that is, let's say someone wanted to just get this image of Mickey Mouse, it's fair use now, and put it on a t-shirt and sell it. Well, Disney can maybe argue that that's interfering with their business because they're trying to pass off their product as a Disney product, and it's not, so it's taking money away from them. And there definitely is an argument to be made with that, and that's where the copyright laws and trademark laws kind of come into effect here. And it talks about in this NPR article, trademark law is entirely about protecting brands, logos, and names like Mickey Mouse as a logo or the name Mickey Mouse, McLeod says. And of course, trademark law has no end, adds Harvard Law School professor Ruth Okenji. Disney and other corporations, she says, use trademarks to extend control over intellectual property. As long as the mark remains distinctive in the supply of goods and services, the owner of the trademark gets to protect that trademark. And this doesn't apply to satire like what South Park does with Mickey Mouse because, I mean, obviously that's supposed to be Mickey Mouse. Uh, they use the likeness of him, but they use it in a way to add commentary and critique on the character and on Disney as a corporation. So that's under fair use in those grounds, not necessarily public domain, but still fair use. So that's not necessarily what they're applying here. Uh, they have this little graphic on the NPR article that talks about what is and is not allowed. So for trademark, which isn't allowed, you cannot use Mickey in a way that misleads consumers into thinking your work is produced or sponsored by Disney. So obviously South Park does that with their version of Mickey Mouse. And it's the same with this new version that's in the public domain. Uh, newer copyrights, you cannot use new copyrightable versions of Mickey until those copyrights expire. And like I already pointed that out with the new versions of the character, you can only use this original version of it. And that includes basically just this one and anything that came before that. So the question is, what can you actually do? You can't uh, use any of the new versions. You can't call him Mickey Mouse. You can't make it seem like Disney. So what is available? And I saw this unique game right here, uh, or at Maybe not unique, but I mean, it has a unique style to it. It's a first person shooter game set to come out in 2025 called Mouse. Uh, they have a little trailer for it. So here, I'll just play a bit of it so you can see what they're doing. I have a feeling this isn't over yet. Yeah, so as you can see, that's just what's going on with this. It's obviously not a Disney product. It's not really even looking like Mickey Mouse. It's just kind of using that old art style. But in the past, if they were to try to produce this game, then Disney would have been in their rights to sue them and tried to argue that it's trying to use their copyrightable image. And they might have won that case. I mean, we never saw such a case, so we don't know what the results would be, but it definitely looks like it's an old Disney style. So 
maybe they would have won it. But now that the character is in the public domain, people are free to try something new with that artistic style. And yeah, they're putting in a first person shooter video game. I mean, I personally haven't seen something like this, so I think it looks kind of fun. But who knows? It could be like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, where once that went to the public domain, they made a slasher movie out of it. And all right, it's okay as far as bad slasher movies go but once you get past the premise of it i mean it's just kind of boring but that's just my personal opinion and a subject for something else entirely but either way i do like the idea that people can actually take this style now and do something more with it besides what disney did with it because i mean it's just an artistic style people should be allowed to try to express whatever they want to with that artistic style without fear of lawsuits and in all honesty this isn't going to really hurt disney all that much because yeah, I mean, this is an image of Mickey that people can use now, but you can see that they've definitely moved past the imagery of Mickey Mouse from this original style to where they're at now. Not only that, but the personality and characterizations of Mickey Mouse has changed since then, too. So, I don't know. I mean, the only way this can really hurt Disney as a company is if uh, they were trying to be a little bit overzealous with it, like someone tried to use this Mickey Mouse in a uh, fair use sort of way because it's in the public domain. And then Disney tried to go after them in court because of that. And I mean, because big companies going after the little guy doesn't really play over too well in public opinion, but at the same time, I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to try to push the boundaries of what they can and cannot do now under these new laws. And some people might not know what they can and cannot do. So they're going to try to get this Mickey mouse and call him Mickey mouse. Uh, or maybe they use one of these other versions of him because they just think the character in general is in fair use. And that's not the case at all. So uh, I'm just kind of curious what's going to happen in the future moving forward, but I'm pretty sure Disney is going to have a lot of lawsuits and legal filings in relation to this, because there's going to be them probably being a little bit overzealous. And it is also going to be people not knowing what they can and cannot do. So they're going to do something and then uh, end up finding out.